Florence Nightingale made an impact on the 19th century medical practices through implementation of innovative surgical methods and taught her methods to others, thus expanding the nursery field. Florence Nightingale was the daughter of a well-to-do family in England. They wanted her to become a socialite. Florence, however, had other plans. By the time Florence Nightingale was 12, she was determined to do something meanwhile, as she liked to think of it. She liked books. She enjoyed caring for sick farmers on her father's estate. Once, she had even saved the life of an old shepherd's dog that had broken its leg. Florence Nightingale's parents didn't want her working in those dirty hospitals as they thought of it, but she was determined. They did many things to try to change her mind. Her sister pretended to have fainting spells. Her mother accused her of being immoral. As a woman of her time and her class, it would have been expected that she would marry, maintain a lovely home, and be a hostess. But Florence Nightingale had very different plans. Though at the time nursing was not a respected profession, Nightingale felt very called to become a nurse. At age 24, Nightingale defied her parents' expectations to marry a suitable match and left England to study at the Kaiserswerth Hospital in Dusseldorf, Germany. After her graduation, she returned to London to go get a job at a running hospital. So, during the Crimean War, she was put in charge of nursing. She went to the battlefield with 38 other nurses. Florence Nightingale carried a lamp as she walked through the halls of the battlefield hospital and she was become known as the Lady with the Lamp. Approximately 18,000 wounded and dying men lie in rooms and line the corridors. The conditions in the hospital were deplorable. There were miles of corridors stuffed with wounded and dying men bandages and rags that were clotted with blood, food consisted of watery soup, and sanitary conditions were such that cholera and lice were rampant. During the next 21 months, Florence Nightingale worked to improve these conditions in the hospital as she deemed fit. She and her nurses bathed the soldiers, washed their linens, and fed them more substantial food. She eventually established a separate kitchen with her own money to prepare easily digestible food for patients. She secured a source of clean drinking water and improved overall sanitary conditions. She set up a system of receiving patients, the basis of modern triage. The morality rate declined 2% because of her efforts. She personally attended to countless men, many on their deathbeds. Florence Nightingale saved thousands of lives. People called her a ministering angel in the hospitals. But Florence Nightingale herself became ill with a disease she got there. In her later years, she was not able to travel, but people came to her from all over the world for her nursing advice. During the Civil War, the United States asked her advice about setting up military hospitals. She became known as the founder of modern nursing through that way. Now taking a modern look on Florence Nightingale, she has revolutionized the medical field in so many ways. She has made so many groups just after her own name. There's an institution in Turkey providing safe and modern medical services, being the pioneer of innovations for 25 years. Group Florence Nightingale. The group has been named after Florence Nightingale, who has first defined the rules for sanitation and hence has started the modern nursing. Shishli Florence Nightingale, being the first hospital of the group, was established in 1989. Then soon after, Gayret Tepe Florence Nightingale Hospital, followed by Kadıköy Florence Nightingale, Göktürk Florence Nightingale Medical Center were brought into service. Istanbul Florence Nightingale offers services in advanced treatment standards through its green and smart building technology for a healthier tomorrow. 250,000 outpatient examinations and 40,000 inpatient treatments have been performed with a capacity of 700 beds in 36 operating rooms and 122 intensive care units by the group hospitals. We then decided to head down to the Billings Clinic to grab some interviews on some nurses and surgeons to see how it affects them during their everyday lives. There, we interviewed a head nurse by the name of Barr. How's it going, Barb? It's great. How are you? Thank you. I'm Devin, and I have uh, Matt here with me. Hello. Oh, okay. Um, we are at Billings Central Catholic High School. 
And we have a history project that we are doing okay. for the National History Day. And we picked a person called of Florence Nightingale. Okay. Do you know anything about much about her? I do. I do. She's pretty much the founding nurse. Yep, exactly. Yes. But we couldn't stop there. We needed a little more information. So we called up a good friend of ours, Dr. Musket, and gave him the same interview. As well with another friend of ours by the name of Max. How's it going, Dr. Musket? Hey. I'm Devin. Um, and I'm assisted here with Matt, my friend. Hello. Okay. Um, we're here on behalf of our history project that we have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's National History Day, and we have to pick somebody and do a documentary over. Mm -hmm. So we picked Florence Nightingale. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then now on you, what kind of, what do you do? What major operations have you done? What is it that you do? Well, <clears throat> I began my career at the University of Washington Medical School, and then went to the University of Utah where I trained as a general surgeon. And general surgeons do everything from uh, <coughs> breast surgery to gallbladder, abdominal, intestinal surgery, all kinds of different surgery. And then after that, I went into a surgical subspecialty. Okay. Very often, people who train in surgery will then choose a subspecialty, and mine was cardiac surgery. So I went to St. Louis at Washington University and trained for two years there and became certified in cardiac thoracic and vascular surgery. Mm -hmm. I came to Billings in 1991, <coughs> excuse me, and did that uh, for 12 years. I did a couple of thousand uh, open heart surgery procedures, um, several hundred vascular and thoracic procedures, removal of lungs, repair of blood vessels, things like that. Yeah. And then in 2003, I retrained as a plastic and reconstructive surgeon. And then in 2005, I returned to Billings and been doing plastic and reconstructive surgery. So I do a lot of uh, reconstructive surgery now so that people that have had cancer or trauma, um, any type of defect in the body, I'm sort of like a human sheet rocker. <laughs> okay. That's the important stuff, that's the fun stuff, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, so now Florence Nightingale, uh, you kind of already answered this, who she was and everything. Do you know exactly how the impact that she made on the medical well, I think what it did is it inspired medicine as a, not only as a profession or a technical exercise, mm -hmm. but as, in a way, a ministry. You know, the idea of combining compassion, understanding, healing into the medical arts. I think that's a profound contribution because you begin to look at medicine as more than just a technical exercise. Yeah, yeah. For instance, you can say, all right, you have a defect in your body mm -hmm. and we're going to repair that. Okay. Now that person may be fixed, but are they healed? Healing is a more complex idea. Healing means rest restoration to health, wellness, happiness. Some people are fixed, but they're not healed. Mm -hmm. And I think what Florence Nightingale was trying to uh, communicate to us is that medicine <clears throat> is not only an exercise, a technical exercise in fixing a physical defect, but rather the restoration of a human being to wellness. Yeah. The idea of healing a human being mm -hmm. with compassion, love, understanding. And I think that's a more dimensional approach. Yeah, that was exactly her mindset towards mm -hmm. it. Now for the final question, um, kind of a fun one, do you think that Florence Nightingale's impact through all this was a good impact and would you change anything maybe? Well, I think the, um, the, the main thing is that for one thing, uh, it really empowered women in medicine. Oh, yeah. She uh, went into a field that traditionally was felt to be too rough or too dirty <clears throat> for women yeah. and took the feminine strength and the feminine um, ideals of empathy and, and caring. Uh, well, that's all the questions we have, and we really appreciate your time. You gave us a lot of insight, and um, I'm sure you'll help us out a lot. So Good. that's it for me. Thank all you. Right, guys.